My name is Kirkus. Today we are discussing a nation in crisis. Ghana today is a nation that is in political crisis, a nation that is in an economic crisis, and some say that Ghana is also in a social crisis. What really are the extents of these crises that we have in this nation? And what can we do about these things to ensure that the social cohesion that we very much desire is maintained? We need to discuss this topic of a nation in crisis is Mesta, soon to be Dr. Mwalimu Mustafa Hamid, spokesperson to Nanadu Dankwa Kufado. Welcome, sir. Thank you, my brother. Welcome. And then Salam Mustafa, a member of the NPP communications team, and yet another very young person as well. Welcome, sir. Thank you. I don't know if I should be calling you, sir, but uh, that's just by the way. Let's clear something first of all. The political crisis in this nation stems from the challenge on the validity of the election of President John Dramani Mahama. Um, we have seen the Kenyans, you know, go through their election petition in record time and all of that. What is your perception of this entire case, Mustafa? Okay, Mustafa, salam. Very well. First of all, let me say good evening to our lovely viewers out there. And um, I want to send some special greetings to all the youth groups in Tamale. They are doing a wonderful job for <coughs> the party. The spirit is high. And the dedication they put into the party is well commendable. So I say a special greetings to every youth group in, in, in Tamale. The <coughs> election petition it's, 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 it's a reality that we are living in today. But let's get the point straight that it's not the first time that uh, a presidential election has been challenged. Indeed, election petitions are nothing new in the world. If the recent one we can recall is that of the Kenyans. And mm -hmm. indeed, we have seen how expeditious they have been in, you know, adjudicating on their case because we had our elections before they did theirs and they've come to overrun us and they are done with their court case. But if you look at the similarities between ours and the, the Kenyans, it's, it's, it's quite instructive because we are challenging the validity of the, of, of the president-elect based on the numbers and the, the, the modus operandi that run the elections. And if you look at the dissimilarities, probably the Kenyans were not able to raise enough numbers to overturn the results. But it doesn't mean that the court cannot overturn results. Indeed, winning elections is about numbers. You need the numbers to win. And likewise, if you want to overturn results, you need numbers to do so. In our case here, we have enough numbers to back our case. Indeed, we even have overflowing, you know, of, of, of the numbers. So it's, there are similarities and dissimilarities if you want to look at the, 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 the Kenyan case and that of the Ghanaian case. But indeed, it is appropriate that we build, you know, a, a scenario of the, the, the Kenyan situation that has led to the expeditious nature of, of, of the attire. Indeed, it's not the first time that they having, you know, election petition. Because mm -hmm. if you look at Daniel Aramoy mm -hmm. and Waiki Baki, there was an election challenge between them. And the election challenge was thrown out based on technicalities. <coughs> Indeed, it took about two years to, exp uh, you know, to, 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 to deal, uh, with uh, deal with the, the case. And after two years, it was more or less a moot case. And the election petition was thrown out. Indeed, running to 2000 and seven when Raila Odinga you know ran for president and the election was faulty they decided not to trust legal jurisprudence to deal with the matter and took to violence indeed it is the singular attitude of mistrust that caused the Kenyans to take to the streets it's because they did not trust the system to do a good job for them so it is a case study for us do we create a scenario a situation where the populace would lack trust in the system such that if there's a recurrent, people would take to violence and streetism. I don't think that is the trajectory we want to go. But we want a peaceful country that will always strive on the rule of law. Definitely. 
the Supreme Court in Ghana, I have absolute trust and confidence in them that they can, you know, give good decision that would, you know, cool every single person in this country. I think they can do that. But okay. the, the, the point should be made clear that if a good job is not done, it will erode public confidence in the system. But clearly, there are similarities and dissimilarities between the two countries. Probably one, somebody will say, there are two different constitutions. That we agree. But if you look at the world, so many things are you know, intertwined. Okay? Indeed, Supreme Court is the highest court of adjudicator. Yeah. They have the power to do anything. They are the laws of the country. Okay. If you look at countries that have used the legal jurisprudence to overturn uh, election results, look at Ukraine. Pakistan, even in America in the year 2000, probably people who don't remember, but Al Gore took, uh, you know, lost the, the, the uh, American election through, through, through the court to, to George Bush. So these are not new things. Like I said in my opening remarks, election petitions are nothing new. Probably in Ghana, it, it's a novelty in the fashion that we have taken our case to court okay. with overwhelming evidence because in 2004 the NDC tried to file a case they were beaten by time and decided to you know go dance around the issues and at the end of the day their case was was, was thrown out okay. but that is not what we we have done we have stayed within the law we have provided enough evidence to the court and we are running the case okay Mustafa a lot of people seem to think that well the Kenyans have done better than we have and so we need to also expedite action what are your thoughts on those things well, <laughs> um, good evening to the viewers um, and to everybody, also my folks in Tamale. Um, first of all, I want to make certain, if you want, fundamental assertions. Okay. You know, there, is, there are people out there who are saying, or in, have been saying since December, that let's ad adopt the Ghanaian to solving problems. Farmer Nyame. I mean, people see me on the street and say, why is your boss challenging? He should let it go and then he can try again in 2016 and so on and so forth. My answer to that is that whatever must be done, must be done well. If we have decided that we want democracy and that people or governments or leaders should be elected through the ballot box, and that there are processes for ensuring that election, then we ought to ensure that the processes are followed and they are followed properly. So that at the end of the day, whoever that will get as leader is a true reflection of what the people say they want. That's number one. Number two is that if Dr. Baumia and Nana Akufuado go through this process, whether they win or they lose, it is of benefit to democracy. And my assertion is that what is beneficial to the whole cannot be detrimental to the past. Okay? And the MPP, NDC, civil society, we are all part of the democratic freedom. Okay? So even for the NDC people who are taunting and saying, oh, this thing Nanado would, is doing, it will go against him, and if he doesn't win in 2016, Ghanaians would punish him. That's my answer to them that what, once we agree that these things are good for democracy, then it cannot be detrimental to the people who form the part of the whole. That's my argument. Number three is that perhaps this is also an opportunity for us to reflect as a nation whether it is okay to entrust the destiny of a country in the hands of one person. I haven't heard people raise that point, but that's a very significant point. Look, in other jurisdictions, especially in the French countries around West Africa, after the electoral commissioner gets the results or comes to a decision as to who should be president, it is passed on to a constitutional court. They call it a constitutional court or whatever. A body that has representation from all the political parties. And then they also look at it. And then their pronouncement is now final. Now look at the arrogant disposition of Dr. Afarijan. Mm -hmm. 
in the course of the dispute, when we were saying that, look, hold a minute, there are few problems that we need to resolve, he, with arrogant disregard, told us that, look, he has the power to decide who becomes president. So he's going to decide it, and then we can go to court. Because he knows that there are precedents in which people like Amu stayed in court for four years. So his original idea was that we will go to court and stay there for four years so that the person that he wants to make king would have run his term as king. And I'm saying that that is not good. Now, comparing Ghana and Kenya, I am not disturbed at all about what has happened in Kenya vis-a-vis -vis what is happening in Ghana. Judicial, if you want, arrangements are peculiar to countries. That's why the law profession is the one that has the least incidence of brain drain. Because a lawyer who is trained in Ghana cannot just pick his books and then go to Nigeria and begin to practice law. Just as you can go to London and practice law and vice versa. So, I mean, judicial arrangements, or even if you want jurisprudential arrangements, are peculiar to nations. And I think that it would be dangerous if we were supposed to just copy other judicial or ju uh, jurisprudential arrangements in other jurisdictions and try to import them wholesale into Ghana. Besides, the nature of the Kenyan petition is markedly different from the nature of the Ghanaian petition. So I am fully for the process. After all, the process will start on April 16th. April 16th yes. And my understanding is that once it starts, it's going to go in a fast track manner. I mean, virtually every day. Every day. Yeah. So the case is disposed. I think that Ghanaians should commend Nanado for what he's doing. Because the Constitution itself is what has said that if there's a dispute, if you have an election dispute, go to the Supreme Court. The fact that the Constitution envisaged this in the first place shows that it could happen. The Constitution envisaged that this would happen or can happen in the course of our history or our democratic history. And that when it happens, this is the way to resolve the matter. Now, the reason why perhaps Kenya too has been fast-tracked is that they have a better experience from 2007. Very expensive one. Absolutely. So because of that, they were trying very hard to ensure that this doesn't happen again. And the more they delayed, perhaps the likelier it would have been for them to slip back into that abyss. And therefore, they were definitely in a hurry to ensure that all of this thing was done with. Um, I think that somehow our, our judges have also taken a cue and I can see from what happened in court yesterday that now there's a determination that we will push this thing as quickly as, as possible. So I have absolutely no criticism against what is happening because of the uniqueness of every jurisprudential arrangement. Okay. Now, for those of you that might not be aware, here is a fact. The Kenyan election petition was based on just 22 counties that Rayla Odinga took to court. In total, they had over 33,000 counties at stake. In the Ghanaian case, however, we have sent 11,916 polling stations out of a total of 26,002. In total, 46% or thereabout of the total valid votes that were counted by the Electoral Commission have been noted to have irregularities. So do not be deceived. I think that 22 out of 33,000 is definitely not enough to have an entire election overturned. Sure. But 11,916 out of 26,002 really is a very solid case. The Supreme Court is going to sit on this matter, and we urge that as Ghanaians, we pray that God directs the minds and hearts of these judges, the nine men, in whose hands, nine men and women, in whose hands that we've entrusted this case. But back to the case, Mustafa. So um, if the Supreme Court comes to a ruling, what, what do you expect Ghanaians to do? Well, I expect us to abide. <laughs> I mean, um, because the thing is in court, it's, it's, it's difficult to really 
talk about nitty gritties. But if the petition of the petitioners is upheld, whether in part or in whole, it has implications for the election. And I'm happy that the Supreme Court has narrowed the issues to two. Indeed, That's that the of is the, the crux of the matter. Exactly. That's the crux of the matter. That we are saying that there, there were irregularities in the elections. That the elections were conducted in a manner that violated, okay, if you want, the rules of procedure. And that these violations were so grave and so serious that they turned out a wrong winner. That's our contention. And that's exactly what the Supreme Court says we should, we should direct the argument to. And that is what they will be seeking. And we shall prove, inshallah, that these violations were so grave that they have turned out a wrong winner. And that these grave violations ought to be corrected. And that if they are corrected, it will have implications. I don't know what the scenarios might be, whether it is going to necessitate a rerun of the entire presidential election with all of the eight candidates on the ballot paper again, or it is going to result in a runoff between uh, 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 two candidates, or it is going to result in a, a new winner of the election. I don't know. There are various scenarios. Or, I mean, you, you, can, you can go on and on and on, but whatever it is, I have absolutely no doubt that it would change what we happened and what we have. Okay, Mustafa, now I want you to address your mind to, to you know, the, the agitations of the youth in particular. The, the Mustafa Salam, let me correct that. I, we are both Mustafa. They are, they are both <laughs> yeah. Mustafa, so let me and correct that. Also Salam, program, uh, the agitations <laughs> of the youth. You, you and I have, 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 have seen a lot of the youth, you know, agitate over this matter. Yeah. What, you know, how do we address that? Well, the issue is information. I think so much information has not gotten to... Now, speaking of information, I mean, I want you to address the fact of truth versus propaganda in all of this. As a nation, what role should propaganda play in it as well, in dealing with this particular court In modern-day governance, propaganda has no place. It's only people who are bent on taking people for a ride who will still engage in propaganda. In modern-day governance and democracy, there's no place for propaganda. People have become wise. People have become enlightened. And for a group of people to want to thrive on propaganda, I say it's, 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 it's shameless. Okay? It, it has no place in governance at all. It should not be entertained. It is crude. It is rude. And to some extent, I say it's criminal to take the people for such a silly ride. So it has no place in, in governance at all. It should be discarded outright. Okay. Now let's move away from this political crisis and move towards the economic crisis of this nation. Mustafa. But let me add some, some little okay. points. The issue is, once we are asking some votes to be annulled, there are other people who say, no, let, people's, let, the, let, let it be as it is. Every person has the right to vote. But um, <laughs> those people don't get it. The right to vote is not absolute. It is conditional. The right to vote is never absolute. It's conditional. That is why if you are not registered and your name in the voters register, you cannot vote. Even if you're 18 years and above, and your name is not in the register, you cannot vote. Some of the conditions that are, you know, we set before you can vote, you should be registered mm -hmm. in, a, in a polling station. Mm -hmm. You should be 18 years and above. Mm -hmm. Even then, you should be of sound mind, lucid. That's why somebody who is insane cannot vote. So these are conditions that are attached to voting. So in that sense, voting is not absolute. Voting is conditional. If you look at the CI-75 that we used to run the election, clearly it says no verification, no vote, which is conditional. That if you come to the polling station, your name is there, yet we cannot biometrically verify you, you still cannot vote. But people don't get it. They run, you know, amok and putting all sort of, you know, gibberish out there that, oh, no, 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 once you cannot disenfranchise people. It will interest you to know that in these same elections, elections have been annulled 
at other places because you know they did not go through biometric verification. So would those people ha do they can't they go to court and you know ask that they are you know they are, their rights have been trampled upon? You see, let's let's get serious. Let's understand rights and how they they they, they, they play out. But and the other issue, like my, my big brother Mustafa was saying, elections are very critical. They have the propensity to propel violence at any time. That's why if you look at most of the African countries, one great factor that triggers violence in those countries, elections. Just look at around, around the, 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 the sub-region. Yeah, the sub-region. Maybe a very clear example is um, uh, La Côte d'Ivoire. We saw what happened there some few you know, years back. A country that was flourishing, all of a sudden you know, ravaged by violence which is you know electoral in nature so we should not treat the matter of the election petition with case glove it's a very serious matter and we need as a nation to all put our eyes onto it indeed it's not the the petition goes beyond ekufuado baumia or jake it's about the destiny of every Ghanaian that we are not taking for granted that when we go and line up in queues in a scorching sun, our decision counts. It's not a case of those who, who go who to count. stand, you know, to vote decide nothing, and those who count decide everything. That okay. is not democracy. All right. But, um, Mr. Salam, you've, you've prickled my mind on something, and I think that it's, it's worth it throwing it out there for all of us to consider. That if you say that voting without biometric verification is not a crime and that the Constitution is supreme, then it means that law in particular is a 419 law. Why am I saying this? If you use that same law to disenfranchise some people at the point of voting, and then you come back later to tell us that, oh, those who voted without biometric verification, as for that, because the, it's a constitutional right, mm -hmm. it is right, mm -hmm. then it means you set up a law to deceive us <laughs> so that those of us that are not of a particular persuasion, we cannot vote. But those who have another part, part, you know, persuasion can vote. What <laughs> law is that? <laughs> Bear in mind the fact that the same constitution that they stand on, that they run to, says that laws in Ghana must be equitable. They must apply equally to, to everyone every of exactly. us. But let's move away from the political crisis in this country and move to the economic crisis in this country. Mustafa, we're just having an off-air discussion where you're talking about capitalist monsters. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. And I'm sure in the past week, um, all of us in this country have been scandalized by the exposure of huge levels of corruption that have gone on in the last four years of the NPP administration. NDC. Sorry, NDC administration, yeah. and which are still going on and which are threatening the foundations of very laudable institutions that the NPP put in place to take care of the weak and the vulnerable in society. And I'm talking about Maslock. I'm talking about NYEP, which has metamorphosed into JIDA, and um, SADA, um, which we call the Northern Development Authority or Fund. My brother, Sometimes it's so sickening and nauseating that you don't want to talk about these things. Look, Ghana is running a campaign in Britain asking ordinary British citizens to contribute their hard-earned pounds to enable our government to buy vaccines to vaccinate our children. My daughter is one year and three months. She hasn't taken the last bit of the vaccination that she's supposed to take in order to close the vaccination train that children take from birth to a certain point. She hasn't taken the vaccination because they say that the vaccines are not available. We are running campaigns in foreign countries, asking citizens of foreign countries to contribute money for us in order that we can buy vaccines for our children. Then these foreign countries see that 
we have turned Jida and Maslock and Edif and all these institutions into cash cows for individuals. Yeah, government. Uh, oh, I, I, I don't know what so word to use them. I mean, we have, we have, you see, the NDC has instituted, Corruption. if you want, patronage politics. You know, clientelism. I mean, something that says that, look, there's a gravy train, and therefore let everybody get on board and take as much as they can. As I speak with you, I'm a lecturer. We've been asked to stay out of the classrooms. This evening, I'm sure you heard yeah. the government saying that a paltry, the maximum, I guess, every lecturer is supposed to collect in all this struggle is about 3,000 Ghana CDs. Okay? Now, you want to give somebody 3,000 Ghana CDs, and you say you are going to pay it in installments. You pay some in, in May, at the end of May, pay some at the end of July, and pay some at the end of September. 3,000 CDs. Meanwhile, immediately after the election, you found 50,000 CDs. And you put in the accounts of 275 MPs. Immediately, you found that money without qualms. <laughs> you found 100 and how much does the president collect? 12,000 CDs. 12,000 CDs for yourself when you increased your own salary. Deputy ministers, all these strings of deputy ministers, um, if they go through parliament, I'm sure at the end of this month, the monies will hit their accounts. That one won't be paid in installments. Those huge monies won't be paid in installments. You see, we ought to have priorities as a country. And it's disgusting. Sometimes you want to weep for this country. That where did we go wrong? How come? What is this? There's absolutely no vision. There's no fellow feeling. People, oh my goodness. It it's pains that people who toil to make this country, to train the manpower needs of our country, are treated like rag, like rubbish. And then people who have absolutely no experience, nothing to show for their lives because they can jump on a political platform and make a few noises and a shout a few slogans. They are entitled to huge amounts of money. I, I don't think that this is good for this country. And the way we are going, we will run this country aground. And I think that it is very terrible. Look at the, uh, the European uh, ambassador to Ghana, one Claude Martin. You heard the way he spoke to our president. Yeah. Never seen a president, our, any president being humiliated like that. Look, look around the country, around the world. People are putting people of substance in political positions because the, there's a struggle for resources in this world. And therefore, people look at who is coming through the door to be able to commit resources. I just read in the papers that the, the one who's been appointed, uh, something Dumo, Komla Dumo's sister. Yeah, Mawena Dumo. Mawena Dumo is junketing around the world, supposedly trying to woo investors. In investors. But how? I'm not an economics, I'm a, I'm a religious studies scholar. But I'm sure common sense dictates to me that if you have power crisis in your country, and even small artisans, there's, there's, some, there's, there's a welder behind my house. The other day, my wife said she passed by the place to do some welding job. They weren't working. He was sitting there. He was in tears. He said for three days, he hadn't worked. He couldn't find just five CDs even to feed his family. Petty artisans cannot get power to power little machines. And then you are wasting taxpayers' money, junketing around the world, supposedly to woo investors to come and establish their businesses on what? There is no foundation. There is no basis. Power. That is the basis for running industry. You, and and I'm, I'm a religious scholar and I'm supposed to understand this. And the economists in the NDC, they don't understand that. So it means that, as the account man will say, hey, bro, the, the people have decided that, look, this country, the majority of the people are not lettered to be mild. Therefore, Steal as much money as you can. Keep it. In an election year, go around and throw 550 Ghana cities around. Yes. You know, you know Professor Richie Calder says that democracy is a word which grumbles meaninglessly in empty stomachs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I agree. 
Yeah. Democracy is a way that grumbles meaninglessly in empty stomachs. Because the, the trick is that make the people hungry for four years. So when you go and you throw 50 Ghana cities at them, you know, they'll be excited to hold at it. Whilst the MPP will come promising them a bright future and promising them education that will open doors and so on. That is not palpable. That is not something that they can see and feel immediately. And one of the psyche of the underclass, there's a book called The Underclass by Ken Oletta. One of these days, I'll let you read it. I think I need to. You see, underclass mentality is a today mentality. So the NDC has mastered that art, that let's create as much underclass as possible. That's why they are not interested in the growth of the middle class. They are not interested in business. Okay? And we'll come to the business bit. Even when it comes to business, there are just two people in this country. Roland Agambire and a Japon of Zoom Lion. Roland Agambire of RLG and a Japon. Who win all the contracts and businesses in this country. From, from rubbish heap collection to tree planting, to, tree planting, to guinea fowl rearing, cleaning the to, beaches. to exercise books, to everything. Between them, they have over 40 subsidiaries. So what happened to the NDC socialist mentality, which supposedly has a mentality of creating equity, of, of, of expanding access, of, of making it possible for as many people as possible to have a bite of the sherry. Okay, I would what happened? ask you to hold on at this minute and then I'll have to take another break. When we come back, the discussion heats up and gets more interesting. And then I would allow you also to join in, in this discussion with your thoughts. Welcome back to Minority Caucus. Now, there are a couple of details that have emerged about the Asan Taba uh, Guinea Fowl Project that will amaze you. Now, I'm using a very, very interesting source, the Insight newspaper of today. Now, you can take a look at the supposed 15 million Ghana CD project, or the 150 billion old cities project, and you can see the building is cracked in many places as well. This is a project that Ghana spent its money on. Now, I want to read to you a section of, of the details coming out of this project. That the Sada Asanta Baguini Fowl Production and Marketing Company Limited was established under um, a joint venture agreement. The date of the venture agreement, I want all of us to decide for ourselves whether this is strange circumstances or not. The date of the joint venture agreement was 28th of November. 2012. Mark this. 28th of November 2012 was when the agreement was signed. The date of incorporation of the company was the 4th of December 2012. Date of commencing of business was the 5th of December 2012. But government still managed to find 15 million Ghana cities to give to this company. And what did we get in return? This. Where is Ghana going to, Mustafa? Salam. Hmm. Nana Kofi, I am deeply saddened <clears throat> by the sordid nature of how we are expending our public pace. It's gory. I can't believe that as a Nordner, if somebody has any plans to help the myriads of people who live in wallowing poverty up the ladder would rather go and engage in frivolity in the name of helping the poor. It's, it's shameful. Like you have shown this picture, I'm sure that for many who didn't know what we are talking about would think that they were giant buildings with glass all over that these guinea fowls were living in but you have just shown a sorry picture of some dilapidated structure. I can bet that Mad this building has been around for more than five years exactly. because it looks very tired. Exactly. Nanagovi, as a Nordner growing up, these are best I know very well. And knowing the <clears throat> geography of Northern Ghana very well, if you ask me, how do we develop Northern Ghana? I will ask you, go and dump money in such an absolute waste. When you have cotton, which has a higher propensity to lift people higher the 
poverty level. Because growing up, I saw how many people cotton fed. It was a viable industry. Strangely, it crumbled under NDC1. And there was some Amajaro in it. Maybe one day we'll, 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 look we'll into come into, into it. Yes. But the cotton industry absolutely collapsed. And today, I don't know why we are not targeting at reviving such a very, very viable industry. Look, most of our smogs were woven with cotton. Today, it is material that we use to, to, to sew most of the, the, the smogs we wear, which is not, you know, the, 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 the usual thing done. But let's, okay. let's address this thing. Look at the speed in which the money... I was coming to that. Yeah. I was coming to that. The other issue is share butter. These are the productive sectors of the northern economy. That if you want quick returns, if you want to help most of the people, you would invest in. But if government has so much money that it is readily expendable, that within a few weeks you, you have the money to dish out to somebody, that this is how the person is going to spend it in a sorry manner, then I'm sorry, we have completely lost it. We are, we are not a thinking country. We have lost our thinking caps. We are, we are in the doldrum, in the wilderness, roaming aimlessly. Because if we have left things that would inure directly to the benefit of the people and we are taken to frivolities, then we are sick in the heads. Okay. Now, I want you to join this discussion by calling this number, 030 221170 I repeat, 030 221170 And contribute your little bits to this discussion. You can also join using the text lines of 1760 All Networks. I'll repeat that again. 1760 All Networks. Now, uh, Mustafa Hamid, yes. this, 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 this is very disturbing. It is. And you know, it's because of, because, you know, the NDC has virtually taken our so-called love for peace. Okay. Now, let's, let's pick our caller from Wa Adam. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Nana Kofi. Yes, I'm uh, Good evening. Uh, good evening to your panelists. This is Admuda from WA. Okay. Uh, we are happy listening to our brothers from the north. And we are really happy with you. They are discussing the matters. But one thing I want to add, just this evening, we are even told that just, we have just been told that uh, the uh, former MPs of the last parliament have also been given their S-Gash. If you can find money to the tune of $2 billion to give to former MPs of about 230 MPs, and you can't find money to pay workers who are on strike, doctors, uh, teachers, UTAC, and, and lots of other workers who are going on strike. Does the government have a focus at all? Does the government have future? And does the government have priorities? This is very unfortunate. You see, we've been telling NDC and uh, uh, those who are in support of NDC that John Mama cannot rule this country. This country is thicker than him. The weight of this country it rises above him. It is only Nana Kufuado who has the magic. Though uh, 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 people have refused to see that, that Nana Kufuado has the magic, and he's the only one who has the hands that can help Ghana and, rise, and, and raise this country from this uh, inefficient, incompetent, gross incompetence that is being displayed by John Mama. Okay. Over the last three months, he was in power. What did he do? Nothing. Now this year, he has come to be started paying things, and he's telling us that we have chewed the meat up to the uh, bones. Now, very we, sad comment. Thank you very people? much and for your call. I have Asamo on the line. How are you, Asamo? Yeah, I'm very fine. How are you too? By his grace. Well, good evening to your panelists. Good evening. Well, um, what I want to put across is that um, really, if you look at the development going on, one seems to wonder whether we have institutions that are supposed to um, uh, some sort of have an oversight responsibility at the spending of the government. When I just look at the picture that you just brought, because initially I was thinking that the five million issue that we're talking about was actually going into infrastructure, payment of salaries for workers, people who are going to work in the industry. But if you look at this picture now, it's, it's just a, a dilapidated structure which is being marked for demolition. So how can we spend our money on this? Please, I'm appealing to the nation, let's just put politics aside. 
and let us get the worth of our money. Where our money is going, we should get something from it, not this kind of structure. Thank you very much. I have Fidelis on the line as well. Fidelis, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Uh, a very good evening to my boy, Safi, Mustafa Tinder. Um, you know, I'm just disappointed seeing that picture um, about the guinea fowl. Uh, it's not, this is an old kitchen in the northern part of this, an old kitchen. But if you look at the pictures that we've seen, where it didn't come on telly and they went and commissioned it, it wasn't this. So it's really disturbing that it's a different thing that people are showing us. My brother, hey, Fidelis, Fidelis, how many, Fidelis, how many, Fidelis, here's the thing. Take a look at the newspaper that published it. I didn't show you this. This is the insight of Christy Pratt. Yeah, moreover, about do you understand me, fowl, Fidelis? Do you understand how, how me? How many months does it take for a guinea fowl to be mature that want to get magic? Fidelis, Fidelis. Yes. I think that it's it's very important that we correct the impressions because I did not use a paper a picture on my own. This is what Crazy Pratt's inside newspaper has published. Can we clear that? Is that okay with you? Okay. I'm not the in one reality, saying that. Whatever goal Sada is coming to achieve, uh, do for us, I think it's in the right direction. Let's be patient and see what will happen. Sada will do. Let us not rush. Don't put. The... It's very unfortunate that um, Fidelis. Well, it's important <laughs> for. Fid I don't even know him. He says I'm his boy. Uh, how that? How did that come? Ah, Mustafa yeah. Salam. Oh, okay. The point we are making, he doesn't get it. People were rearing guinea fowl in the north before Rolanda Gambire was born. That's the point that has to be made. Before he was born, there were guinea fowl farmers in the north. And when he's dead, there will be guinea fowl farmers. Do you understand? So the point that we are making is that, as a party that claims social, what do they call themselves? Social democracy. Social democracy. We are talking about alleviating poverty of many, many uh, how do they call them? Thousands of Ghani uh, northerners who are poor and who are guinea fowl farmers, who, if we gave bits and pieces of this money, would be able to put it into expanding their farms and employing more people. Why must it be one person doing everything? Why? So what? If the man falls dead, then that's the end of Sada. That's the end of poverty alleviation in the north. That's what we are saying. I mean, uh, my, 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 my three-year-old son knows that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. That one is said by primary school children. So why is it that as a country we have decided that only two people are the captains of industry, the captains of economics, and everything that they solve it? That's the point that we are making. We need to democratize wealth creation. That's the point that we are making. What is not what the NDC is doing? Last year or so, they took 100 tractors to the north, divided among the southern regions, five regions. Basically, one tractor to all, every district. Can that affect agriculture? And what in was the cost of way? that? Two million. Two million they gave us. So the main occupation of the people of the north is agriculture. Okay, farming. And if we invest this amount of money in agriculture, the north can feed the entirety of Ghana. So it's a serious matter, and people should not belabor it at all. Look, On political lines, exactly. Look, if we... The, I, I, I farmed rice in 2010. And it's interesting to know that after farming, it took me over six, we six weeks before I could harvest the rice. When bears were, were feasting on, 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 the, on the farm. Why? They, 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 in fact, up to date, I doubt how many combined harvesters we have in the north. In the north. You, can't get one. you can't get up to 10 in the whole of the Sahelian region. You can't get up to 10 you know, combined harvesters. And at the end of the day, it was tractor. We, we, we had to crush the, the, the rice to be done manually. That is a sorry state of uh, agriculture. Uh, agriculture in the north. You know, we have vast expanse of land that people can till and produce a lot of food. So we are saying put the money at the in right sensible place. projects, okay. not this useless frivolity. That's the point that we are, we are making. So if nobody is impatient, we are just saying that target the people where the money has to go and let it go. Don't go and put money in the hands we of are, one person. You continue to enrich one person person at the expense of, of all of, of us. Of, of, I, 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 it doesn't make sense to Sada me. Sada is supposed to it be doesn't make sense to me at all. an interventionist program, okay, that, you know, seeks to uplift, you know, people from poverty. So if we want to help people 
you know, upgrade people. Is this how we are going to go about it? Waste money? And the most, the most manner? interesting thing is that it whilst, whilst, whilst we are having... Now, and I see, when I go to the north, I see my people, and sometimes I go crazy when I come and I, I now, see this while, kind of nonsense. Whilst we are having these things being done, um, we have a documentary about guinea fowl production <laughs> on the various networks, but it's a very sad commentary. It's a very sad thing to realize that our nation is in crisis and some people do not seem to realize that. Ladies and gentlemen, I have two things to say. Whatever the decision of the Supreme Court is, Ghana must progress, Ghana must develop, and so let us learn to take all of that. We have faith that the good Lord will speak the truth on our behalf. Number two, let's learn to get beyond the politics and attack what is wrong as wrong. I do not think that if I have 15 million cities i would give it out on projects such as this at one go. Let's put all of this political divisions aside and look for Ghana first. It is the development of Ghana that is necessary. The last thing I have to say, Mr. President, please declare your assets. Yes, I'll repeat it. Please declare your assets. My name is Nanako Fiopondama. I've been in the studios with Mwalimu Mustafa Hamid, spokesperson for Nana Adudanko Akufuado, and Mustafa Hamid... Uh, Mustafa Salam, sorry, a member of the NPP's communication team. We are young people. We believe that the NPP has given us the chance, and so will they give you the chance if you come to us in the right manner. Until then, good evening.